hello guys so now we have set up all our infrastructure that is required to learn reverse proxy in this video we'll get to know how reverse proxy is configured what actually is reverse proxy and how things can be configured in the conf file that we have you know created in the last video well reverse proxy is a kind of a proxy server which retrieves information from the application server on behalf of the client. It actually sits in between the application server and the client and every request and response is going through it. For the application server, it feels like everything is coming from Nginx only and for the client, it feels like every response and you know request we, it is doing to is coming from only the Nginx server. So basically it is saving from any kind of DDoS attacks or other things. So it is actually securing our application servers. We need not to expose our application server to outside world. So let's see how reverse proxy is being configured. So we are now in the Nginx console. Let's go to conf.d directory slash etc slash nginx conf.d if you remember we created this virtual.conf file let's open it so let's delete this server block since we have created four apis from the two backend servers so we'll be adding four location blocks here one for each api so location let's say the request is coming in the name as I'll say like it's back backend one backend one and one that will be good just to remember well we are studying reverse proxy so we need not to define any root location here because everything will be proxied to a uh, another server that will be uh, application server or backend server one or two in our case so there is one directive that we generally use in case of reverse proxy that is proxy pass directive proxy pass directive yeah so here we just need to define the ip of the backend server with the port and the request type like on what type of request it's listening on let's take the internal ip of backend server one from the AWS console, so it's backend server one. It's private IP is this one. Go back here, just paste it. If you can remember, the API one was running on port three thousand, and it and the URI was slash only. Just closing it. Now create and the location block for. I'll say it like backend two. Sorry, it's backend one and endpoint two. We need to remember these URIs as we need to mention in our static page in the anchor tag. Proxy pass HTTP the same internal IP for the backend server one. If you remember the URI type, the URI was slash test. So we have defined here for the backend server one. Now we need to define two more location blocks. Backend, just use the same proxy pass directive. Now here we need to give internal IP of the backend server two. Well, it's this one. Just paste it here. Give the port number and the first request was slash only that's enough let's define the fourth location block backend to endpoint to use the same proxy pass directive Testing the same internal IP and the request was slash testing 
Well, here we have added the four location blocks. So let me explain first. So whenever a request is coming on Nginx on port 80, whenever the request type is slash, it will simply load this static.html page. Whenever the request is coming as slash backend one and one, it will proxy it to this server that's backend server and the request will be made to slash when it's coming as slash backend one and two then it will proxy it to backend server one as slash test request and the same here like when it, the request is coming as backend two and one it will proxy to backend server two with the request as slash on port 3000 and when the request is coming as slash backend two and two it will be proxied to backend server 2 on port 3000 with URI as slash testing. Let's save this file. Check the syntax sudo nginx minus t. It's successful, it's perfectly working. So we need to go to our static.html that's in HTML directory. Okay, sudo monero. We need to open the static.html so we need to define the endpoints or you can say in the anchor block so that whenever we are doing any request it should go you know to nginx and then nginx should proxy the request to the desired backend server so here it goes like we'll give the public ip of nginx server let's grab the public ip of nginx server Here it goes and we need to define the request type as we defined there as backend one and one backend one and one. it's not required so it's done and for the same this one I just need to give the IP of nginx the URI will be backend one and two. The same that we defined in the location blocks of the conf.t directory. Okay, backend one and two. That's fine. Now let's go to this backend server two part. Do the same here for the rest of the two APIs. Just paste the Nginx public IP and one. Do the same here as well for the second API. On the backend server 2, it is backend 2 and 2. Well, that's fine. Just restart the nginx service sudo service nginx restart. It's done. Check the status. running perfectly take the public IP of nginx and hit it in the browser so it's opening this page since we have you know marked these endpoints to the respective APIs for these backend server 1 and the backend server 2 so it should give the response as we created let's check whether the services are perfectly working or not by clicking on endpoint 1, we are getting this is the response coming from backend server 1 endpoint 1. So, here the nginx is you know querying the backend server 1 and hitting the URI for the first API. Let's get back. Let's check for the endpoint 2. So, this is the response coming from backend server 1 and endpoint 2. Let's check for the backend server 2 endpoint 1. So here we're getting response from backend server 2 and point 1. And for the fourth one, that's the appropriate result we get. So here Nginx is perfectly playing the role of reverse proxy. You know, when we are hitting and point 1, it's actually the request going to Nginx port 80 with the URI as slash backend one and one 
and then proxy pass directive is transferring that request or you can say proxying that request to the application server that's backend server one in our case and we're getting the appropriate response from the backend server one api one and api two and other services that's it for this reverse proxy lecture we'll study some more interesting topics in the next video